Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to the Legal Forum here only on the Islam channel with me, Lee Clark. Now each week the Legal Forum discusses common topics within the legal sector of law and today we're looking at the growing issue within the property sector, landlord and tenant disputes. Now according to Money Facts, with more than 4.7 million households now privately rented and 3.9 million socially rented, it's more important than ever to be up to date with what is and what isn't acceptable for you and your landlord. Now numerous issues can cause disputes between landlords and tenants and the number one cause of dispute between landlords and their tenants is cleaning. To discuss this topic and much more, I'm pleased to welcome Omar Khan. Omar, how are you? Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about where we would start from, say, your point of view in this particular topic. Yeah, there are obviously so it's a very vast area. Um, there are loads of loads of kinds of disputes between the landlords and tenants. I think the most important thing is what I suggest always to my clients that when they are as landlords, if they are um, uh, giving their property on rent, they must check who the tenant is or is going to be. Because if you vet them properly, and obviously there are uh, several uh, a list of issues which can be resolved at the beginning, yes. especially non-payment of rent. If the person can't afford the property or the rent, and then obviously there are going to be uh, problems later on. Right at the very, yeah, right well, at the exactly. very start of it. Is it. Just a quick thing before we get into it. Who would you say from your experience at Khan Solicitors do you have more complaints and legal issues with? Is it complaints from landlords about tenants or is it about tenants about landlords? Well, if looking at the balance, I think I, I, I get more from landlords, okay. really, uh, because you know, there are other issues, uh, several issues, which is non-payment of rent, you know, Would you say that's that the most is, common issue? That is most common, yeah. yes. And uh, eviction, obviously there are other reasons as well that you know the, <clears throat> the, tenor, the landlord wants to move in themselves or uh, you know, uh, they are not cleaning the property or the, the property is not in the condition which they uh, uh, gave in. Um, uh, you know, small kids and obviously the property is in the position where you know, you can't even, you know, just look at it and say, well, you know, this is the property which I gave yes, to exactly, my tenants. Yeah. Um, uh, but mostly, I, I would say that it's the non-payment of rent. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, and eviction is very, very, um, you know, uh, obviously complicated as well for them. And at the same time, when they're not getting any rent. So if a landlord, okay, they've rented out their property and they have their tenant in and they've done what they think is the best sort of checks, what situation does a landlord then, or at what time does a landlord start to worry if rent hasn't come in on time, or, or what is the landlord able to do if rents haven't been paid yeah. on the agreed time? Well, uh, c considering that you know the landlord has done whatever their um, responsibilities are, um, and the tenant is in, fine, everything is going. Obviously, you know the tenancy agreement is in place. You know everything is fine. Then, uh, you know, for the six months fixed, you know, short, uh, shorter tenancy or one year or two years, whatever they have mm -hmm. agreed. And now uh, the, the tenant's duties are that, you know, they have to keep the property clean, you know, small things here and there. If there are not major repairs, obviously they have to do they have to keep the, the furniture clean and everything, you know, so, so they have to this consider the house as, as their own, obviously, because they yeah. are living there. The, the landlord is not living there. There's a thing that, as a tenant in the past of myself, and also been a landlord as well, there's this phrase that you hear in this, this sort of category about wear and tear. Yes. And, you know, for instance, when a property may need repainting. Uh, some landlords I'm aware of have come in after maybe three or four years of renting and said, oh, I'm going to take your, some of your deposit because the painting needs done. But clearly after three or four years of being of lived in, it needs to be done anyway. Yeah. No, but wear and tear, it's, it's the, the, mostly the landlords are responsible for outside okay. the, the property and you know, keep it clean and everything. And obviously wear and tear is inside. Mm -hmm. Uh, unless it's a major, major uh, problem, which is dampness mm -hmm. and other things which, which can cause health problems to the tenant, uh, obviously they have the responsibility to deal with those. 
Uh, but wear and tear, you know, is the responsibility normally is with the with the with the tenant. But if they're living in there and say that the, the painting needs doing, yeah. the walls need refreshed because it's been lived in for three or four years. Yeah. Who has to pay well, for it's, that? Well, it's it's between it's, it's the agreement. It's no set okay. rule, you know. Here, uh, obviously, if it's, it's the landlord is going to spend, uh, you know, a, a lot of money on it. And then obviously either it can be contributed by the tenant as well because they are living there. They're going to benefit from it, yes. Exactly. And then, and, and you know, if, if they have got small kids normally, what they do is drawing <laughs> everywhere. So obviously, you know, that, that is contributory as well, that, you know, it, it needs uh, painting uh, uh, more, you know, earlier than normal. The major, as I said, uh, the major repairs are responsibility of the and the, the landlord, so that is the important that you know they have to do it. But you know, changing a bulb obviously is not the responsibility of the landlord. You know, there's a general perception that landlords are are the people who are uh, the bad guys, shall we say? And um, if, in the press, I'm talking about here, and from government figures as well, that, that the tenants are the ones who are being oppressed by landlords. Is that? actually right or is that just something that no, has I been perceived over the years? I think it's a perception because I have seen is that uh, on the balance I think they are equally victimized you know at, at some point you know if, if uh, the the worst thing for the for a landlord is not receiving a rent on time exactly you know you can't punish someone you know more than that because you know they have to pay their mortgage or you know whatever other um, you know uh, utilities. So obviously, if if that is not and it's, it's in arrears, you know, it's not worth keeping a property. Yeah, you know, exactly. you're giving the uh, to you know. So the mostly is that they can't re repay the mortgage every month. What time frames does a landlord have? Because, for instance, they have to still pay the mortgage on the property. Yes. Um, and what protection would they get from the legal system? Because a tenant can't be just thrown out overnight. It could be taken no, in, it, it in your could, terms. What's what's the time frames uh, in that situation? What happens is if if the, if, you, if the tenant has refused to pay or is not paying on time, mm. so you have to give the notice to the tenant. Uh, After where, how long of uh, where it? yeah where it's two months consecutive right. delay, or there is historical delay as well. Okay, you so know. they've done it regularly. So sometimes, yeah, exactly. So if, if they've if they've done, they are supposed to pay every fifteenth of every month, and they pay twentieth or twenty fifth. Mm. So obviously, it's it's a delay as well, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, but if they have not paid for two months, and if they are in arrears for the last two months, then you can give them section under section eight notice. Mm. If they don't leave the property within that notice period, uh, you can you can start the. Uh, the court proceedings under Section 8 is a mandatory. But how long does that take though? Because obviously the landlord will still have the, the mortgage uh, fees to pay and if he's relying on the rent for the mortgage, does he get some respite from the mortgage companies or the building societies? You no, know, of no. course not because you know he has the responsibility to pay. Okay. Uh, is, uh, that is a separate um, you know, contract with him or agreement mm -hmm. with, the, with the... So what happens is, uh, unfortunately I've seen uh, you know, uh, landlords who who lose a lot of money mm -hmm. because if already two months in arrears, they start proceedings, tenants stop paying the rent again, and if it takes about three months to evict the tenant, and they spend their own money on, on, on legal proceedings, and eventually they, when, they are, when they leave, they don't have, well, they don't leave any, any, any their address or, or anything, so where you can go and ask for, or even if you get an order for the, Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you will get an order for, for the um, arrears, uh, you know, of the rent. However, how will you? Uh, 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 how will you chase it down? Chase it down, you know. So you will spend uh, uh, another money, uh, another legal cost to to go and and recoup that money. Would you say that? I think it's fair to say, if you're a landlord, that you don't take anything for granted. I mean, I'm not the, the expert here, but a can't solicitors, obviously you would put a landlord in a good position. Okay, it might cost them some fees, your initial fees to help them set out their legal uh, form, shall we say, but you shouldn't ever just take a recommendation from somebody, just cover yourself legally, that's, and then that's gonna help you go forward. Well, that's what I, uh, I would say again and mm. again to them, and I, I always say to my um, clients that, 
uh, you know, if you had wetted them properly through an agency, you know, you wouldn't be in this situation. You wouldn't be in this situation. Yeah. You know, the, obviously the the estate agents who are uh, you know reputable ones, you know, not just silly ones. You know, they are uh, really bad as well. Or in terms of you know, <clears throat> then uh, I have seen the uh, you know instead of fighting with the tenant, they are fighting with the agent. <laughs> you know, yeah. because they have the dispute. You know, they are charging more or uh, whatever. So, so whatever they do, they must make it formal. You know, they, if they are going to use an agent, make formal agreement, you know, what are the terms and conditions, and then give it, you know, hand over to them, and then they can deal with the tenants. Uh, and a, a good, reputable one, so who know what, who know what they are doing. Otherwise, it's going to be another problem that you will be, have, you will having a, or you will have a problem with the, uh, with the agent. So I have seen that. Uh, in order to get the vetting done, you know, a good, a reputable agents, they've got the resources to do that. They've got the, obviously, recommendations as well, but still they have to go through that process. And if the process is good, they've covered every angle, still there are problems. It can be, yeah. you know, if... Uh, if uh, well, people's if tenant, situations can, of course, circumstances can change. change yeah. So if, if your tenant is... Job, yeah. well, exactly, so that's, what, that's what it is. But at least you have made yourself mm -hmm. secure in the beginning. You have done your best. You know, whatever, whatever happens in the future, you know, you never know. But even leaving all these things behind in the beginning, that is dangerous. Is there a way that landlords can cover themselves with insurance policies, for instance, for loss of a monthly income um, through no fault of their own? Yeah, they are, they are available. They are, yeah. The policies are available, you know, so they, if, if they want to. I'm not sure, uh, you know, the loss of rent or, uh, you know, or I, think, I think there are certain um, ten, oh, sorry, agents who would say, uh, you just give us the property and we will pay you the rent. We'll guarantee month, to you know, give guarantee you rent. So uh, that could be one of the... You hear those sort of claims on like radio exactly. adverts, don't that, you? you? Exactly. Quite so, regularly, so, those yes, ones. Yes, that's right. And, and they might be saying, um, uh, you will get the rent and we will do that. And uh, they get the insurance. Mm, but okay. if the landlord wants to give themselves, then obviously they will have to buy some kind of insurance. So that, that is available on... So everything's gone, let's say, swimmingly well. Everything's gone really well between the landlord and the tenant, the tenant and the landlord. Um, things in the landlord's position may change, and let's say vice versa in the tenant's position. They want to leave the property. Legally, what's the minimum amount of notice or, max, or maximum amount of notice they can give you? Yeah, what the, for the tenant, well, it depends on what your, um, your um, tenancy agreement says. Okay. You know, so normally what happens is that if the tenant wants to give a notice, then, you know, it's a one-month notice. Okay. But if the landlord, by law, the landlord must give at least two months' notice. So the landlord has to give at minimum two months', two notice, months notice. Uh, to, to make the change, and the tenant just one month? One month. You know, if they agree on, you know, certain terms, okay. that's fine. But if it's not disputed, then it's a problem. Uh, you know, if it's disputed, then it's a problem. But if it's not disputed, you know, they can give any, you know, 15 days or one month or whatever, you know, according to their convenience. However, the landlord must give two months' notice to... So, so you guys at council this is going to be able to pick up anything that's uh, well, not, of course, not, yeah, not straight correct, away, straight away. Exactly. So if, if it's not correct, uh, tenant, uh, sorry, landlord cannot uh, get the, the possession. Okay. And they have to re restart again, you know, they have to reserve the, again, um, the, the, the notice. Very important. We've talked about tenants, we've talked about landlords, we've talked about agents in the middle. The other case where you might be owning a property but then gaining money from that is if you are living in the property and renting out a room to somebody. Do rights change lodges, I suppose, that's the word. Yeah, they is are, that they, what the yes. term is these so, days? So yes. Uh, well, yes, it is commonly used, um, lodges, because they can't be tenants because they are, you, know, you are living yourself in the property. Mm -hmm. And if you, so that, that is a, a license, really. So you have, some, you have allowed someone to stay in the property and, and, and you have not given any um, uh, agreement or anything. Uh, you know, it can be a license, you know, a small agreement that, you know, you will be living here until such certain, well, until such time. <clears throat> or I can ask you to give you a notice of a week to vacate the property. 
uh, you know, that, that, is, that is not a tenancy agreement, uh, which obviously is enforceable. So you'd recommend that some sort of agreement, legal yeah, document is... Yeah, of course, is, it is, should be. It should, it should be, be uh, you know, any, 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 any dealings we do, I think it should be in writing and formally done. Yeah. Uh, most I've seen are that people, they don't, landlords, they don't even give out any tenancy agreement. You know, I've really? seen those things. Oh, yes. And, 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 and uh, you know, they are living there just, you know, informally. Everything is done informally. And then when the problem starts... <laughs> One big risk, isn't it? Of really? course, it's it like is. That. One it big is. risk. Right, from a rights point of view, if you have rented a room to somebody for whatever reason, you, you want to get some extra cash or you, you know them, um, circumstances change. You don't want them to live in your property anymore. They're refusing to go. Um, they're causing stressful situations. What rights does the owner of the property have with a lodger who's in their property? Well, they, uh, they can give them notice, and obviously if they don't want to leave, then obviously you can't check them out. You know? So you can't just go go, you can't exactly. call the police? You know, and still, still you, you'll have to follow the procedure. Okay. <clears throat> Of course, they are. They, they've been living there, and they would claim that you know they've been paying rent and all that, and they've got rights and all these things. But it is a, a, a um, straightforward and a, sim a simple, simpler procedure than uh, uh, getting the tenant out of the property. So you know, uh, it could you know if if you want to force them out of the property, it may cause other problems. So I would not recommend doing it yourself and you yeah. know. It could be uh, using harmful as well, yeah. Of course, yes. But, what, but you hear these scenarios and you read in the papers where, let's say, the lodger has gone out for the day, the, the owner of the property changes the locks, for instance. Yeah, well, it, it, it does happen, you know, because they haven't got any um, tenancy agreement. They, they were um, just on licence, you know, mm. you, you're, you're not allowing them to, to be there. And therefore, uh, it could be uh, some naughty... Landlords, they they have done these kind of things, mm -hmm. um, uh, but I would not obviously recommend it. Taking your law in your hands is is not uh, good. But you know. So that's against what we're talking UK law. If if you of course if you if you the, the, the their belongings are there and you know obviously you change the locks and you know they have got <coughs> evidence that they have been live, you know staying there and the mm -hmm. properties uh, sorry their belongings are there. And, you know, that could be really, you know. So, so there are other certain um, uh, areas of law which come, you know, get involved into it. So mm. it's better not to, and, and, and take legal advice before, you know, doing anything. So now we've covered obviously that area with squatters and um, uh, various situations, and hopefully we've covered a lot of ground on this show. Um, does a tenant have more rights than somebody who's here in the United Kingdom on a visa, for instance? It, d does the um, law side more with you if you are a resident of the UK as opposed no, to no, a, no. just the legally law is, being here? No, the law is, uh, you're a tenant, you're a tenant in you're law. You're a tenant. And under the law, obviously, your rights are the same as, you know, regardless of your visa mm -hmm. uh, conditions. The only thing is, obviously, that, you know, you have to have a legal stay in the in the country to uh, to rent property, which obviously the court, the, 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 the um, government is very very uh, urging on <coughs> on landlords that you know they must check on the employers everywhere that you you must not um, give any uh, your property on tenancy to a person who uh, does not hold a valid uh, leave to remain in the country. Okay, so that is important. Otherwise, if they are tenants and they are legal and uh, obviously under the law, they've got the same rights, the same law for them and for everyone. Um, the, the wonderful thing about family and friends is something we touched on very briefly at the start of the show today. Um, in your experiences as a solicitor, not personal obviously, but um, from a professional point of view, again, just cover the advice that you would say to renting your property to family and friends how do you kind of side with advice towards that? Because in my experience, let me tell you, I've lost some friends over renting property to them in that way when, because it's yeah, quite well, a hard situation to deal I, with. I think it's just not renting. It's, it's everything. You know, yeah. whenever you have the dealings with um, your family or friends, obviously you're bound to fall out <laughs> with each <laughs> other. You know, there are going to be problems. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of, especially in terms of tenancy, 
Um, you know, as long as uh, you follow the procedure, I think they should not have any problems. Uh, because if, you, uh, you know, when you, wherever you just um, bypass those, uh, you know, basic procedures, uh, the problems start from there. And therefore, I always say, even if I am a solicitor, if I, if I act for my cousin or any family member or whatever, I will have to follow the procedure which my office has the policy of it. I have checked the ID, I have checked everything, I have taken his instructions, I am acting whatever, uh, you know, on his behalf as diligently, as, as efficiently. Uh, I shouldn't have any problems. You see, so the problems start where you do informal things. Well, listen, as uh, time has uh, escaped us this particular show, Omar, um, a big thank you to you. But um, yeah, I'm just going to sum up from without you even needing to. Just make sure if you're a tenant or a landlord, I would say, get the correct legal advice. Visit yourselves at Khan Solicitors. Make sure that you see a solicitor. That's right. Get a credit check done. Get a valid search done on the people that you're either renting from or to. And make sure you're covered is the main thing, I would exactly. say. Exactly. Well, Omar, thank you very much. It's been lovely to see okay. you again today, as thank always. You thank much. you very much indeed. Well, so there you have it. Some important and helpful information on landlord and tenant disputes. We hope the scenario discussed on today's show can give you a better understanding on today's topic. And I would like to thank our guest, Omar Khan, solicitor and partner of Khan Solicitors. Please bear in mind, the views and opinions expressed in Legal Forum should be considered for informational purposes only and not case-specific legal advice. All topics are discussed in a generic nature and it's important that you either consult either with a CAB law centre or a solicitor before relying it. If you'd like to find out more about the Legal Forum or the topic discussed on today's show, please do email us at legalforum at islamchannel.tv. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much indeed for watching this week and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.